Hello, it's Melissa Daniels with Strabismus 2 Stereopsis, and today I have an exciting treat for you. I'm going to talk to you all about the newest, latest, and greatest amblyopia treatment called CureSight. And I actually got to try it out. It's pretty amazing. I want to share some details with you guys about who it's for, what it is, how to get it, all the things you want to know about it. If you want more details, you can go over to my website, strabismussolutions.com slash curesite, or you can go over to their website. I'll put both links in the description below. First, let's talk about what CureSight actually is. Put one up here. This is the CureSight device. It is basically a computer screen with eye tracking at the bottom that tracks your eye movements. And the device is only designed to do one thing, and that is stream content. And it's really neat because it's unlimited content so you can get any streaming service you can think of is available on this device and the idea is that somebody with amblyopia which is when one eye is not able to see clearly so it's also called lazy eye when somebody has that condition they use this device to strengthen their weak eye Usually, like in the past hundred years, the go-to treatment for amblyopia or lazy eye is to just wear an eye patch over the strong eye, forcing the weak eye to see. But of course, with technology advances, there's such better options now. The way that this device actually works to treat amblyopia is that you watch the movies while wearing red and blue glasses and they have it spe specifically designed to go with the tracking so that it's a dynamic treatment. Basically, the central part of whatever your strong eye is seeing is blurred out. So if you look over to the left, the blur is over here. If you look over here, the blur is over here. So the blur follows your wherever your eyes are moving. And what that does is it forces the weak eye to take over and give the input for that central vision. So let's say I'm watching a movie with a cute little teddy bear and I've got both eyes open. I'm wearing my red and blue glasses. Put them on for effect. I'm wearing my glasses and I look at this little teddy bear's head. Well, out of my left eye, I'm just going to see a blur with a teddy bear all around it and like the whole background, right? But the center of the teddy bear's face is blurred out. Well not until my right eye comes in and starts filling in those details. So my right eye is doing the central details, both eyes are doing everything peripherally. What's super cool about this is that it actually builds fusion and stereo, not just acuity. So acuity is how clearly your eyes can see. That's all that patching can do, right? Patching is just designed to improve acuity which is great, that's an important thing. All doctors, it doesn't matter who you talk to, an optometrist, ophthalmologist, pediatrician, they all agree. If your child has amblyopia, they need to get the eye stronger and develop those neural pathways. There's just a lot of different ways of doing it. So I like this way because it's strengthening the vision and the ability of the brain to use both eyes together, and it also improves acuity. The great thing is that they did research on this device. It's not like they just made it and were like, we think it's going to work. They actually did the research, put it up against kids that were patching, and there was way higher percentages of kids that were able to get more than two lines of improvement. And the stereo vision also improved, which was not the case in the patching group. All those statistics you can find over at, on the articles on my website. That is what the device is. It is nothing crazy, right? You're basically just watching a movie for an hour every day, and that is gonna strengthen that weak eye. Super awesome. Now, it's not necessarily designed for everybody, and that's important to notice because it is a device that's covered by insurance, but not for every single person. And that's because when they did the research, they based it on a certain group of people. So the parameters that you need to fill fit within in order to use this device you need to be between ages four and nine you need to have amblyopia or lazy eye which means one eye is weaker and you know can't be fixed through glasses you also cannot have a severe strabismus so your eye turn needs to be five diopters or less now that means that if your eyes clear out here or up here or in here this is not designed for you. For you, a better option might be virtual reality where they can deal with the eye turn as well. This is for like 
a more strict amblyopia diagnosis. It definitely can be used with adults. There's nothing saying that you can't use it, but you'll be paying out of pocket for that, which is yeah, it's totally fine. I definitely got benefits when I was using the program. I used it for about a month, and that's not really long enough to get like these lasting results, but I definitely saw some differences. I could feel my eyes starting to work together and getting that fusion better in a different way, which was really cool to be part of. The next question you probably have is how do I get one, right? You can't just go on Amazon and order a CureSight device. Wouldn't that be easy? This is because it's a medical device, it's covered by insurance, and so you have to have a referral from a doctor. The cool thing is this could be a referral from your ophthalmologist, who like that's the eye surgeon, or an optometrist. It could be your developmental optometrist. So any eye doctor can refer you to this program and they send the referral over to CureSight. And once they get it figured out, they'll give you a call and say, hey, we got this referral, we've got the insurance figured out or not figured out, and this is what it's gonna cost you every month. Are you okay with that? You sign the contract and then they send you out the device. Not all insurances are gonna cover it in full. It totally depends on how things are, but I always say it's worth investigating. So you receive the device in the mail and they have a monitoring center based in the United States and they help you with the whole setup process. They teach you how to use parental controls. Actually really simple. Like I did most of the setup before they called because I didn't realize they were gonna do that. And so I was like, oh, I should have waited, but it was really straightforward, easy to use. I did have a couple little issues throughout the month and I just sent over an email or called and it was like, they were so quick to help me figure out how to, um, I, some of them were so silly. Like I couldn't get my Bluetooth to work. And it was because I didn't have my headphones turned on. So, you know, I'm 37. I'm getting kind of old. So technology can be really tricky. But anyway, so the monitoring center is great. They help you through the whole process. They are going to be monitoring, making sure that you're actually using the device. Because if you're not using the device for at least 18 hours I think is the insurance requirement, 22 hours is the cure site requirement, and 30 hours is the recommendation. So they're gonna be there telling you like, hey, I noticed you only got six hours in so far this month and it's the 10th of the month. Let's see if you can get every day. So they're gonna be there helping make sure that you are reaching those levels. So not only is it gonna continue to be covered, but also it, it'll actually work, right? As we know, like with patching, it's, it's something that you do every day for four to six hours. This is a lot easier than that. It's not for four to six hours, but you still have to do it every single day. It's something that you need to be consistent with if you wanna have those results. And so it's great. The monitoring center tries to kind of keep you on track for that. As far as my experience with it goes, it was super easy for me to use. I definitely felt like it was a workout for my eyes. That's something that I think I wanna make sure people understand that this isn't just sitting and watching Netflix, right? You've got your six-year-old, they're like, oh, I'm just gonna watch movie instead of patching, and it still exercises your eye. So it's not like, it's not as relaxing as fun and fun as just watching a movie, right? Patching is challenging. This is still challenging. This is still gonna be pushing them because they've got an eye that doesn't wanna work, and this is forcing that. And so it's not necessarily gonna be easy. And so having that conversation with your child, like this is difficult, but like it's way more fun than patching, right? Like this is, this is going to help you and most things that help are challenging. And so anyways, it, it was difficult, but also like you kind of forget about it and just start watching the show. So it definitely was pretty easy. I felt like it was a pretty passive exercise that I was doing. I did decide to set it up with my six-year-old just because I wanted to try it out with a younger kid that was actually in the age range that it was designed for. She doesn't have amblyopia, but she is six and wiggly. So I thought, we'll see if the eye tracking works, if I can even get it calibrated. And it was so easy. Took one try. Um, it gives you this little face to make sure their face is in the right spot for the eye tracking to work. And so we had to do a little adjustments with our office chair to make sure that it was at the right height for her. Um, she was able to follow the fireballs. You can see in the video, she's moving her head instead of just her eyes, cause she's just little and tiny. and doesn't have a lot of practice with that yet, but you, we went through the whole, you know, calibration process. Then she put on the glasses and started watching the show and 
I mean, she doesn't have amblyopia, so she didn't even notice. I, I was trying to prompt her, like, so are, is it blurry in this eye? And I was trying to, she's like, no, it's fine. I can see everything just fine. So um, it, it wasn't necessarily a great way to test if it, how it works for kids with amblyopia, but the setup process at least was no big deal. And I thought maybe that, you know, because when you wear red and blue glasses and you watch the movies, it is going to change the colors on the screen a little bit. It's going to, um, it's not going to be like the true colors of the movie necessarily. And I wanted to see how she responded and she didn't seem to be bothered about it at all. So that was good. I, I even asked, you know, is it, is it a weird color? Does that bug you? And she's like, no, it looks normal. And she just, I mean, little kids, it, it didn't bug me either. Like you get used to it really quickly. And so I just things that I tried out and it totally worked fine for her. And that is CureSight. I think it is an amazing program. And I will say that I love the idea of combining this with vision therapy. It's not necessarily a replacement for vision therapy. They don't treat all the same things. Vision therapy is much more comprehensive. They're taking in the whole like hand-eye coordination and visual information processing and primitive reflexes and tracking and like, there's just a lot more to vision therapy, but this is like a huge key part of what people with amblyopia really struggle with, with getting that acuity up. And so if you were to do CureSight for six months and then go do all the fine tuning through vision therapy, I feel like the combination could be ideal and help people get to that result led getting insurance to cover part of it, which is super beneficial, right? I know that vision therapy is not cheap. So having that option for insurance coverage is fantastic and also keeping interest because doing vision therapy with a four or five year old can be really difficult. So if you can do some of this stuff where it's a little bit easier for them, a little bit more passive and then jump in with the fine tuning and keep their interest a little bit longer. So that's my personal opinion. I'm not a doctor or anything like that. So you definitely should talk to your optometrist or ophthalmologist about whether or not this could be a good option for your child. But I definitely think it's worth looking into.